What's up guys and welcome to today's video where we'll be covering something a bit different compared to the last time we talked about additional storage for your phone. So if you remember the PD20M, I've said it's quite a good catch if you're wanting to expand the actual storage on your phone and if you're going somewhere to record it's actually really good because you have a mag option for your iPhone for instance. But here we have something a bit different, right? And it's again one terabyte of storage. This right here is Team Group's X1 Max USB flash drive, and we're talking about USB 3.2 generation 2 times 1, which means 1000 megabytes per second trans transmission. Uh, it has dual drives, so if you want to connect it to your PC, you can go with Type A or even Type C because you have two side caps that could be removed quite easily and when you remove them you get this right so on one side you can connect it to one pc and on another you can connect it to your mac you can connect it to your uh, iphone you can connect it to your tablet or anything similar to that that you think of but in this sentence it sounded like you could do that simultaneously don't try it i won't so just to give you an idea don't do that Basically, what this helps out is quite the easy transfer. Honestly, you don't have to use, for instance, when we're talking about iPhone, you don't have to use iCloud. You don't have to use AirDrop or Bluetooth or Google Drive or anything. You just connect this side type C to your phone and then the type A to PC. Or if you're going with the Mac, you can use type C again. So it's really straightforward, as you can see, there is actually only one way to connect uh, to close the cap on type C for type A, it really doesn't matter. But let's be honest, it's a cool thing and really handy when we're talking about this. Now, adding it to your iPhone, what happens here is that it sticks out and it sticks out quite largely in terms of uh, well additional something that you can't bend and additional something that doesn't give you an option to um, let's say hide it or have it flatten on your phone like the pd20m and that's why i have it right here to give you an example so the x1 max is something that you might need just for short recordings or anything similar to that that won't go into your distraction or you have a cage that will actually protect the usb from i don't know accidentally breaking and um, the type c connection being left inside your iphone i don't know just giving ideas so hopefully there is a somewhere to protect it so you don't accidentally break it while it's in the phone but regardless of that i did some benchmarks of course i have to do that and to check out the speeds and uh, everything all together so as per usual, I went really into details. Uh, when you plug it in, it's in XFAT format, so you can format it in NTFS. But regardless of that, Type-C AS SSD, 1023.61 megabytes per second read and write is 958.02 megabytes per second. Then we go with that to this benchmark, read speeds go up to 951.36 megabytes per second, while the write speeds go up to 900. Uh, 7.09 megabytes per second. Crystal disk mark write speeds 983.02, while the write speed 925.07, uh, and the 54.9 gigabyte file transfer speed reads were 944, while the write was 752 megabytes per second. But we have the other side as well, so I wanted to test the Type A uh, connection as well. We're talking about uh, ASSSD read speeds 982, while the write speeds are 894.51. Then we have read speeds at auto disk benchmark 942.23 megabytes per second, while the write speeds are 898.15. Read speeds at crystal disk mark uh, 969.05 while the write speeds are 899.87. 54.9 GB file transfer speed, read speeds are 925, while the write speeds are 731. As I did for the PD20M, I did with uh, the X1 Max to check out the possibilities when we're talking about recording. And since uh, I had the possibility to test it out on iPhone 16 Pro Max, we're talking about 4K at 120fps, ProRes HDR, 36 minutes. 4K at 60, ProRes HDR 73 minutes. Then we have 4K at 30, ProRes HDR 147. 4K at 24, ProRes HDR 183. 
and of course HD 60 we have 295 minutes also ProRes HDR and HD at 30 ProRes HDR 590 minutes. Now I noticed some certain inconsistencies in speeds, but it's not that drastic, but yet it drops. So as you might have noticed from the benchmarks, there are certain drops and this is all because I ran the benchmarks from the beginning till the end constantly without stopping. So type C is sorry first and then basically transferring to type A directly, no stopping. The only thing that I had to do is plug it in and plug it. That's it. So there are certain drops in performance and that is visible. Basically, you can see them on benchmarks, but nothing drastic in terms of keeping you worrying. Uh, it shouldn't happen. Definitely shouldn't happen. Uh, and I think more what I would appreciate if the if the casing was aluminium, which would definitely help with the heat. Because let's be honest, if you try to record something in 4K, 120 or 60 FPS HDR on and all the other stuff, uh, it, you know, it might not handle it properly. And you might not get those proper FPS in terms of recording. Because you know what happens. I've, when I tested some external drives on my Blackmagic camera, FPS dropped because the SSD heated up and... We had stuttering on the video, which was a total disaster. But I don't think this will happen with X1 Max. I'm just saying there is a slight performance decrease when the thermals heat up. And that's all there is to it. So something handy. It doesn't have to be directly on the phone. It doesn't have to be directly on the Mac. You can combine it whatever you wish because you have two sides, Type A and Type C. Uh, quite small and slim design. It's actually slim as an iPhone. So they thought about that at least. Uh, because, uh, as I say, the PD20M, for me personally, if I go and record outside and I need additional storage and I record it with my iPhone, I'm definitely going to take that and place it at the back on the magnetic connection. So it kind of stays uh, blended in with the phone and I don't have additional distraction while recording. But this is something quite cool and on the go, I would say. So if you need to transfer some regular files from a PC to a PC or anything bigger, I don't know, larger files, you can definitely go with this one. But if you want to record something with your iPhone, you can do that as well. But I wouldn't recommend it, depending on your personal preferences, actually. Depends if you like uh, having something sticking out on uh, your phone and uh, giving you a possibility to basically distract you in some sense. But not taking it as a negative. I'm just giving you guys some ideas what you can expect and uh, what you could choose. If you're going for something permanent on your phone, go with PT20M. If you're trying to transfer files from your PC, from your Mac, record something quickly on your iPhone, this is it. Uh, X1 Max USB 3.2 generation 2 times one uh, 1000 megabytes per second read write, and that's all there is to it. I'll put the links below for both actually this time because I want to give you guys an option to choose and um, Basically, think about uh, what could suit you best in a certain environment where you're recording with your phone or you actually need it for something completely else. I'm just saying it can be connected to your phone. So yeah, enough with the uh, chit chat, enough with uh, unnecessary discussions. Uh, the links for both are in the description below. You know what to do. Subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell, and I will see you definitely quite soon in another one. Bye-bye.